Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple muzzle flash generator script. This is a script that once we run it, in seconds it creates a randomized muzzle flash based on a preset, and it doesn't matter how many you generate, each time it's going to be unique. So if we take a look, you can see we have a simple muzzle flash, there's no smoke or anything, you could add that in just as easily, but we're going to be taking a look at creating a muzzle flash based on three solids and an adjustment layer. So to get started, we'll make a new JavaScript file, and I'll go ahead and zoom in here and make it full screen so it's a bit easier to see. We're going to start off with an app.begin undo group, and we'll also throw in an app.end undo group, and we'll just call it create muzzle flash. Now inside of extend script and after effects specifically, there's an object called a shape, and a shape contains vertices, intangents, and out tangents. A vertice refers to the x and y position of any given vertex, the intangent refers to the handle that's coming into the vertex, and the out tangent refers to the one that's going out. So I'll go ahead and create a variable called flash shape, and this will be our muzzle flash shape, and we'll set it equal to a new shape. And now we need to set up the flash shape vertices, the flash shape intangents, and the flash shape out tangents. Now basically what this needs to be is a two-dimensional array. Each index needs to have an x and a y value for each of these properties. I've already got a list of vertices and in and out tangents, so I'm just going to paste them in here. And I'll turn on word wrap. And you can see each index has an x and a y value. And I'll go ahead and bring in the in tangents and the out tangents. Now one thing you might have noticed is that each of these values is a decimal. What this is actually representing is the percentage so if I pull up a calculator and take my width, which in this case will be 1920, and I multiply it by the number here, which is basically 31%, I'll get the actual x value that this belongs to. The reason I don't just have 600 in here is because this shape will basically conform to any sized composition. You just need to multiply the percentage that it is by the width or the height, and you'll get the absolute position for your specific comp. If you check the description, I'll have a paste bin for different types of muzzle flashes. I've got star front, star side, pistol front, pistol side, machine gun front, and machine gun side. And you can go ahead and grab those and use them for your script. But if we use these vertices every time, it's going to be the same exact muzzle flash. So we want to add in some randomness. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable called random shape, and I'll set this equal to a new shape. And now below our flash shape, we're going to create a few variables, one called temp vertices, one called temp in tangents, and one called temp out tangents. We're going to make all three of these arrays so we can store in a bunch of vertices, in tangents, and out tangents, set them to a random shape, and our random shape is going to be based on our initial values. So we'll make a for loop where we can run through each of the vertices and randomize them. So we'll say var i equals zero for eyes less than our flash shape dot vertices and the length of vertices i plus plus. So this for loop is going to run through how many vertices as well as in and out tangents we have. So I'll take my temp vertices and push something, temp in tangents and push something, and the temp out tangents and push something. For the temp vertices, we'll need to put in a bracket since we're pushing a two dimensional array into each index. I'll take my predefined width that we have, which is 1920, and I'll multiply that by our flash shape dot vertices, and we'll grab index i, and then index 0, which will be the x, and then I'll throw in a comma, and we'll go to the x, which is the height, so I'll grab our height, which is 1080, and we'll multiply that by flash shape dot vertices, again index i, and index 1, which will be the y values. So what that will do is push the exact same vertices into our temp vertices. But to add randomness after we grab our flash shape vertices, we're going to multiply by a little function here, which will be math.random times parenthesis, and we'll want to put in our max, I'll say 1.05 minus our min, 0.99, and parentheses plus our min. So math random will generate a random number anywhere from 0 to 1, so it could be 0 0.5, 0 0.75265, or 1. So let's say it's 1, 
we're going to take 1 and multiply it by 1.05 minus 0.99, which is going to give us 0 0.06, and 0 0.06 plus 0.99 is 1.05, which is our max. And say math.random generated a 0, we would take 0 times our difference here, which would still be 0, and we'll add 0.99, which is our min. So I'll go ahead and copy this random function, and I'll paste it into here. And now all of our temp vertices will be slightly offset from our original vertices. And then for our in and out tangents, we're not going to add any randomness, but we're going to push the same values through anyway. So for in tangents, I'll say flash shape dot in tangents, index i, value 0. And for the other value, I'll say flash shape dot in tangents, index i, index 1. And I'll go ahead and paste this here as well and just change this to out tangents. All right, now let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to alert our temp vertices and I'll go ahead and run it. And you can see we have our randomized vertices. If you remember the first value I previously calculated was 604 or something, and now it's 597. So there is some variation. All right, now we just need to set our random shape equal to these values. So I'll grab our random shape dot vertices. I'll set it equal to our temp vertices. Our random shape dot intangents will be equal to our temp intangents. And our random shape dot out tangent will be set to temp out tangents. Okay, so now we've manipulated our mask. So we have a unique muzzle flash every time. Now we just need to set up our composition and actually create it. So I'll create a var called project, set it equal to app.project, and I'll also create a var called comp, and we're going to create a new comp, so I'll call project.items, and I'll add a comp. The first argument is the name, I'll just say muzzle flash comp. Then we have the width, the height, pixel aspect ratio, the duration, and the frame rate. And now we want to create three solid layers for our muzzle flash with different luminance values so we can apply a tritone and make it look more like a muzzle flash. So we're going to create a sort of dark gray one, a middle gray one, and a white one. So I'll create a var called flash bottom, which will be our bottom, one called flash middle, and one called flash top. And each of these is going to be equal to comp.layers, and we're going to add a solid. The first values of our solid will be the color values. Since this is the bottom one and I want it to be a darker color, I'll just say 0 0.455, 0 0.455, and 0.455. Then I'll give it a name, a width, a height, a pixel aspect ratio, and a duration. Now I'll go ahead and copy and paste this to the two other ones. I'll go ahead and change the middle one color values to 0 0.659 and call it muzzle flash middle. And I'll call this one muzzle flash top and set it equal to white. And because a muzzle flash only lasts about one frame, we're going to want to set the out point for each of these to be one frame. So I'll grab my flash bottom and say the out point is equal to 0.03, which at 30 frames a second is equal to one frame. And I'm going to do the same for the other two layers. And now we've done that. Let's go ahead and run it and see how it looks. And you can see we've got our three layers. They each last for one frame. And now we just need to apply the mask options to them. So below where we set the out points, we're going to set up all of our masks. I'll create a variable called bottom mask, one called middle mask, and one called top mask. Our bottom mask will set equal to our flash bottom layer dot masks. And we're going to add a property called mask. And I'll go ahead and change the values of these so they go to the appropriate layer. And now we just need to set our mask equal to our random shape we previously generated. So I'll grab my bottom mask and I'll grab the property called mask shape. And I'm going to set the value to our random shape. And I'll go ahead and apply the same thing to these other ones. And now let's go ahead and run it. You can see now we have three layers with the same exact mask and they all have different luminance values. So now we can just fiddle with the mask expansion to get a nice gradient effect like this. 
So for our middle mask, which is our light gray, I'm going to grab middle mask and I'll grab the property called Adobe Mask Offset, which is the expansion. And I'll set the value to negative 20. And then for our top mask, I'll grab the Adobe Mask Offset and I'll set the value to negative 30. So now let's go ahead and run it. Now we've got a muzzle flash with a nice luminance gradient. Now all we need to do is apply some effects to an adjustment layer and get this looking like an actual muzzle flash. So below all of our masks, we're going to create an adjustment layer. So I'll create a variable called adjustment layer. And because there's no actual function to create an adjustment layer, we're just gonna make it a solid. So I'll say comp.layers.addSolid. We'll just go ahead and make it white. We'll call it adjustments. Set the width to 1920, height to 1080. One for the pixel aspect ratio and one for the duration. Then to make this an actual adjustment layer, we just call it. So I'll call adjustment layer and the property called adjustment layer. And we'll set it equal to true. And then just to be safe, I'll grab my adjustment layer out point and set it equal to 0 0.03. So there are three effects we're going to want to apply to give it the best muzzle flash look. That is a tritone, a glow, and a radio blur. So I'll start off by creating a variable called tritone, and I'll set this equal to our adjustment layer dot effects, and we're going to add a property called Adobe Tritone. Then I'll make a var called glow, and this will be equal to our adjustment layer dot effects. And again, we're going to add a property. This time, the effect match name is Adobe Glow 2. And finally, the radial blur. I'll make a variable called radial, set equal to our adjustment layer dot effects. And we'll add a property called Adobe Radial Blur. So before we run this, I'm going to go ahead and open the composition in a viewer. So I'll grab our comp and just say open in viewer. That way we can see it after we've created it. So I'll go ahead and run the script. And here is what we've got so far. It's not too bad, but it's kind of dull. So let's go ahead and adjust some of the properties of the effects to get it looking better. So if we take a look at our tritone effect, we have our highlights, midtones, and shadows. Let's go ahead and adjust each one of those. So I'll create a variable called tritone highlights, one called tritone midtones, and one called tritone shadows. For the highlights, I'm going to set this equal to our adjustment layer, the effects, the effect called tritone, and the property called highlights. And I'll just copy and paste this for the other two and change highlights to midtones, and we'll change this one to shadows. Now I'll go ahead and call each one of those again, and I'll say set value. And for each one of these, we'll want to pass through an RG and a B value. And these are the values that I have found worked best. Okay, so these are the values I found work best for the tritone. If you want to grab these specific values, scripting doesn't use anywhere from 0 to 255. It uses 0 to 1. So say for example I wanted to convert this color to the proper formatting, I would just take the R value, divide it by 255, and that will give you the value you need. Take the G value, divide it by 255, and then take the B value and divide it by 255. And that same concept applies for getting these vertice values. All you need to do is make sure you have your info palette up, highlight over vertice, and you can see it gives you the X and Y. All you need to do is divide the x value by the width and the y value divided by the height, and you'll get that percentage. So now for our glow effect, we we'll want to adjust the radius and the intensity. So I'll make a variable called glow radius and one called glow intensity. For the radius, I'm just going to say adjustment layer and we'll grab the effects, the effect called glow and the value called glow radius. And then the same thing for the intensity, except instead of glow radius, it's glow intensity. And now we can go ahead and set the values for the glow radius and the glow intensity. And for this, I want to randomize it. So what I'm going to do is say math.random. And I'll go ahead and copy the code from up here. 
So we have math.random times our high and our lows. So the maximum radius I'd probably want is somewhere around 25. And for the min, probably 15. And then for the intensity, anywhere from 0.5 up to 0.8. And finally, let's set up the values for the radial blur. So I'll create a variable called radial amount, one called radial center, and one called radial type. For the amount, again, I'm just going to refer to our adjustment layer, the effects, the effect called radial blur, and for this one, the amount. And for the center, I'll replace amount with center. And for type, I'll replace it with type. Okay, now we just need to set up these values and we will be done. So for the radial amount, we'll set the value. For the radial center, we'll set the value. And for the radial type, we'll also set the value. The radial type has spin and zoom, spin being the first value and zoom being the second. So we want to set that to two. For the radial center, we need to pass through a two-dimensional array with our X and Y position. And I found that about 655 and 545 work fine in a 1080 comp. And then for our amount, let's go ahead and set it up to be random. So I'll grab my random function here. We'll say the max should be 60 and the min should be 40. Okay, and now our script should be complete. I'll go ahead and clear out everything here and run the script. And it looks like we have a missing parenthesis. Let's go ahead and run it again. And now you can see we've got a muzzle flash generated. If we go ahead and preview it, you can see it looks pretty good. If we go into our adjustments, you can see all of our effects that have been randomly sort of generated. You can see it shows a blur amount of 43. And we could go back in and generate as many as we need to. And each time we hit the play button, it's going to be a different muzzle flash. So adding that randomization to your script can really make your elements a lot more unique. And say you're generating 100 muzzle flashes per project, they're going to be different every time. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's how to create a simple muzzle flash generator for After Effects. The code for the vertices and tangents will be in the description as well as the code for the script itself. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like. And as always, subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. But we will see you next time.